Hello everybody, it's Joe here and welcome back to another episode of Preserved Bus Adventures. You're joining us up at Town and District Transport Trust on a very cold December afternoon where we've spent the best part of the morning running between the local supermarket and the Trust itself, getting plenty of little things of table salt. Okay, we should have used the big bag, but somebody had bought them all up. We've been defrosting the ramp and we're going to be taking the B7 hourly out for a little jaunt. Nowhere specific, but you need to run them, don't you? Otherwise, uh, if you don't use it, then you'll lose it. So yeah, I hope you enjoy our little run today. Oh, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Good lord. Right, okie dokie. So, full lot round. We've got loads of space at that end. Loads of space. Mind the wall. Yep, yeah, we're good. We're all good. Jesus, this is difficult. And we've got somebody that has parked not in a space. I won't be able to get it out. I won't be able to do all with that because that I-20 there is not in a space. It's double yellows. What are we going to do? Well, as it turns out, the I-20 was parked perfectly legally in a space. But when you're annoyed and you're disappointed because you're, uh, you're not able to take your bus out, it's nice to wave your arms in the air and point the blame at somebody else. Anyway, here we are again a few weeks later. We're in January 2023 and we're going to give it another go. We've been charging the batteries for absolutely ages and, yeah, there's nobody in the space. Right, are we going to the petrol station? First of all... What this worth three hour wait. Three and a half hours. Well, as previously mentioned there, yep, it took three and a half hours to charge the batteries on the Eclipse. We had it plugged into a trickle charger, and uh, it turns out if we'd have actually disconnected the batteries from the bus, it'd have probably charged a lot quicker. The Eclipse Urban does have a lot of electrical bits and pieces on it, and so by leaving it connected to the bus when we were charging the batteries, the electric bits and bobs were basically sapping the energy out of the batteries almost as fast as we were putting it in. But after three hours, somebody very kindly suggested, why don't we just unplug the batteries, then charge them? Won't they charge quicker? Yep, half an hour later it fired up and we were ready for action. Well, it feels absolutely fantastic to be out on the road again in this bus. It's been well over a month since I last drove it, and yet, I've not lost it. We've not wrapped it round a lamppost. It's beautifully smooth to drive, apart from all the rattles and crashes. And uh, yeah, I, I might not look it, but I'm very, very pleased to be behind the wheel again. Well, we're just driving up through the, uh, the, the potholy streets that are Great Harwood on our way to the petrol station. At this point, we haven't planned the route, but that was the route we took from Great Harwood in the north down towards Chorley, just through Blackburn, uh, not on the motorway, over the A roads, but it was just a really nice route to give the bus a run out. By the petrol station there, we filled the bus up, £200 and two pence later, and we still didn't have a full tank. I set myself a limit of either 200 or a full tank, whatever happened first. And yeah, after 200, we still haven't filled it. Oh, it's a bit soul destroying, isn't it, really? But I guess that's, uh, that's bus preservation for you.
Well, as always in these bus, uh, preserved bus adventure videos, we always manage to end up behind a cyclist, and today is no different. Uh, and fortunately this time, however, it was a lot quicker to get round him. We weren't following him for quite as long, but the traffic was quite light, unlike when we were driving down to Keith at that time. So yeah, gapping the traffic straight round, giving him plenty of room and uh, making sure we got back on our side of the road before the oncoming traffic arrived. Well here we are in Chorley and you'll notice the front panel's missing. No we haven't broken down, you'll have seen earlier I was wearing some gloves whilst driving and that's because the heating system had decided to give up on us. The bus was freezing cold, it was so so cold, uh, my hands were actually going a bit numb whilst driving. Now my good friend Dave had a little brodle about in the system and managed to get the heating back so the gloves are off the next portion of the video because the cab has a little bit of heat in it. So good job about Dave with us really isn't it because he's absolutely fantastic at what he does. The town of Chorley does have a uh, quite a large Arriva and stagecoach presence so first bus uh, with all Halifax branding packed up by the railway station did look a little bit out of place. We did get a couple of funny looks off one or two bus drivers but the majority were smiley and wavy and it was all round really really nice. Of course they'll have been having a nosy. First group in Charlie, are they taking over? Hang on, how, how do we route? There we go. Five, four, has it been a while? It has been a while. Look at that! What? Move my chair! <laughs> She's only little! Backrest door. Yeah, and posh chair! Right, thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye! Give our love to Reese Sterling and Jamie Jackson. See you later! Right, where are we going now? 
straight on. So did we actually decide what it was that was wrong with the heater? Because it obviously is working now. Yeah, I'll fix the electric. Oh, right, okay. Oh, right. Oh, thank I you. I was going to say, I'm sure that it used to work. It Maybe it's just a loose wire. Water. Just a loose wire. Oh, yeah, yeah Transpennine. Turned out it wasn't a loose wire at all. The solenoid was full of water. Yep. Leaky bus, not good. Right, so we're going left here and then straight on towards Manchester. Yeah. Well, we're heading back out of Chorley now, back up towards Blackburn. The daylight is fading quite fast, actually. I mean, it is January after all. Uh, the camera did an amazing job of, uh, of, of lighting it up. It was actually a lot more dim than the camera would show. But uh, we had to get back to the garage because we wanted to beat anybody that thought they might be parking. Because it's all right if we can't get the bus out. But if we can't get the bus back in, that really is a problem. The reason I've been doing a lot of these voiceovers is because actually you have to concentrate quite a bit when driving a bus. On OMSI it's alright isn't it, you can turn collisions off, you can go ploughing through buildings, cars, street furniture, till your heart's content. But when it's you that actually has to pay for the repairs on a bus, yeah, there's a bit more concentration involved. Unfortunately in real life we can't just turn collisions off. So yeah, I would do a bit more talking whilst driving along, but I do like to just make sure that I am concentrating so I don't wrap my bus round a lamp post. Straight forward. Well, darkness has fallen now and the good news is we made it back to the garage. And what better time, about 6pm, uh, when it's cold and breezy, to start ripping your seats out. Yep, when we went to Chorley we called off at Dave's house, he got all his tools and we hadn't quite had enough of the bus by the time we got back. So here's a little montage of us uh, ripping the seats out. We're taking the old nasty ones out and replacing them with nicer new seats. They're not all completely new, but uh, it does just spruce the bus up a little bit. Thanks to the scrappers that were at First Halifax, we've been able to take the seats out. And as you can see there, I'm having a go myself. I'm not too, uh, I'm, I'm fairly talented with a spanner. Can't get up off the floor like, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, it's nice when you can turn around and say you've had a go and done some things yourself. We didn't get the full bus done, but, uh, but we, we did get all the way to the step and we'll have to go back at another time to do those.
And here we are, here's the finished article. Uh, a couple of chairs, all done nice and neatly. The maquette all nice and new and facing in the right direction. Had you noticed that before? Because I hadn't, but yeah, it's all facing in the right direction. And that's the end of Preserve Bus Adventures for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, do click the like button. Let us know if you saw us en route. I know a couple of you did from, uh, from the comments on one of my other videos and Facebook, uh, but yeah, like the video, click to subscribe so you never miss out on any future episodes and of course do consider checking out the Facebook page, it's where I'm going to be putting all my uh, my bus preservation updates as well, there's a link to that in the description. Other than that, thank you so so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you all next time. Cheerio! Goodbye for now.